25th of April, 1900, was a gala day in the small market town of Olney, Buckinghamshire. The opening of the Cooper House as a museum was a matter of national interest. In 1900, William Cooper was an established national favourite, as poet, letter writer and personality. He was celebrated as an exemplar of virtuous middle-class domesticity, co-author of the much-loved Olney Hymns, advocate for animal rights, the abolition of slavery, improvement of the condition of the poor, and the power of nature to heal mental and spiritual affliction. He was, above all, supremely English. Today, the Cooper House, now the Cooper and Newton Museum, is still welcoming his admirers. Cooper came here in 1768, having suffered a serious nervous breakdown a few years previously at the prospect of a political career. His companion was the widow Mrs Mary Unwin, with whom he had lodged in Huntingdon. At one point he asked her to marry him, but the offer lapsed. All the same, she would care for him for the rest of her life. It was Mary who encouraged him to begin writing poetry again. Cooper enjoyed the company of witty women, not least his muse and near neighbour Lady Austin, who had lived in France and brought with her the glamour of life beyond Olney. As a young man, he wrote passionate poems addressed to his cousin Theodora. Later, her sister, Lady Harriet Hesketh, became a frequent visitor to Olney. This was the house and household in which Cooper produced much of his most famous work. Cooper's most important poem was The Task, published in 1785. Famously, he started it as a way of breaking out of the depression to which he was prone. It was set to him as therapeutic homework by Lady Austen, and this is why it's called The Task. Although within the poem that phrase starts to mean something more like the self-appointed task of a poet to comment upon the world. This uncomfortable-looking daybed is the very sofa which Cooper addresses as he begins the first of what turned out to be six sections of an epic poem. The task would strongly influence poets Wordsworth and Coleridge and become a standard in the 19th century middle-class library and a particular favourite with women readers. Written in blank verse, the task is a groundbreaking mix of a highly personal evocation of genteel provincial domestic retirement and commentary on global affairs. So there are descriptions of his pleasure in cosy winter evenings spent with his three pet hares and companion Mary over her needlework and newspapers, his doings in his garden and greenhouse, his local walks and love of the landscape. But these are mixed with indignant critique of urbanisation, industrialization, blood sports, political corruption at home, and imperialism and war abroad, and much else along the way. The poem shifts scale and tone continually. Here, instructions on how to grow cucumbers on a heap of manure in a greenhouse. There, biting criticism of a metropolitan culture of consumption based on the slave trade. It might seem odd to us nowadays, but in the 18th and 19th centuries, it was possible to become celebrated as a letter writer. After his death, Cooper's friend and patron, William Haley, collected up his poems and letters, prefacing them with a memoir. The letters became famous for their charm and wit, and in turn made the house in Olney famous. Here is Cooper writing about the little summer house in the garden. I write in a nook that I call my boudoir. It is a summer house not bigger than a sedan chair. The door of it opens into the garden that is now crowded with pinks, roses and honeysuckles, and the window into my neighbour's orchard. Cooper suffered a second major breakdown in 1773. He often addressed his tendency to suicidal depression through and in his poetry, including in The Castaway, the last poem he wrote before his death. 
In 1786, Cooper moved to a grander house in the nearby village of Western Underwood. Here he continued to work on his translation of Homer, until in 1795, in poor health, he was persuaded to move to Norfolk. Before he went, he wrote these apprehensive lines, equally witty and poignant, on the shutter of the bedroom window. Farewell, dear scenes, forever close to me. Oh, for what sorrows I must now exchange ye.